Hi guys, Chris here. Many of you might remember the video that I made quite a while back where I set up the long mill vertically to see how it could perform in that orientation. At the time we were launching our machine on Kickstarter and we were getting quite a handful of questions asking about the rigidity of the machine and also if it was feasible to set it up in a vertical orientation. I figured I might as well kill two birds with one stone and so I decided one night I would set the machine up bolt it in place using two tables and see what the result would be. And I was very happy to see that the machine was able to continue to perform as I expected it to in the vertical orientation. Fast forward to now, people will see this video and I will occasionally get questions asking how they should go about setting their machine up in a vertical orientation after they've purchased the long mill from us. And after hearing the success stories from a handful of our customers who have set up their long mill vertically and have been able to run it for months and months and months with great results, I've decided to take another stab at designing a more official vertical mount for our long mill CNC machine. I went for a standalone design because this allowed for the machine to be mounted onto the stand while the stand was laying flat on the floor. And once the aligning process was completed, I was able to lift the stand up and stand it up vertically and now have the machine ready to go. The other important thing I wanted to consider in my design is an ability to support raw material, which may be on the larger side, while you're trying to mount it in place for a cutting operation. And this is where my adjustable height shelf comes into play. Now this shelf uses just some scrap material I had laying around, and by cutting the two alignment rails on the CNC itself, it ensures that the hole placement is quite parallel and by leveraging two quarter inch steel dowel pins as well as some threaded inserts I'm able to adjust the height of this shelf and mount it securely in place and that then acts as a sturdy surface for me to rest material on while I'm clamping it or screwing it or gluing it in place on the machine's waste board. Now I'll post plans to this design, both the 3D model and the drawing, in the description of this video, so you can check it out yourself. But in general, this design is able to be assembled completely out of a single sheet of 4x8, uh, 3 quarter inch thick MDF, or two 4x4 four four foot sheets, as well as about 9 two by fours that are about eight feet in length. Once again, the more precise measurements and lengths of all of these materials can be found in the description of this video. Now I had some great help from my cousin Victor in putting this entire stand together. It's very handy having a second set of hands to ensure that the lumber is square, that you're getting all the correct angles, and especially to lift the stand up onto its feet after it's done being put together. Once you've mounted and squared your machine and you've got the stand upright, this is the opportunity that you can take to use the shelf to your advantage, stick your last piece of uh, spoil board MDF into place and mount it to the surface. Once this is mounted, that's when you're gonna run your surfacing operation to ensure that your spoil board is parallel to your router. I want to reiterate how important it is to be wearing respiratory protection and ear protection and eye protection um, while you're around your machine, especially when it's in an orientation like this. And especially in this case, since I wasn't running the machine with a dust boot on it, uh, the MDF particles are very fine and you really don't want to be breathing them in. Now I figured it wouldn't be enough just to set the machine up in a vertical orientation and call it a day. Just like with my last video, I wanted to set out to make a project in the vertical orientation to test the machine's capabilities while it was at this drastic angle. And so this time I decided to go for a much more precise cutting job. I was looking through Thingiverse and I found a hilarious model of a really buff Pikachu and thought that it would be great to try cutting it out.
There's something that I would change later about this model to make it a little bit better, which I'll explain to you during the next cutting operation. But for the time being, you can see that I used a hacksaw to actually cut off the corners um, because I wanted it to be flush. Now you can see that I'm changing the bit over to the tapered ball nose bit. Since the model is not the full size of the stock, what I did is I went back and I added a square onto the back of it so that when it was doing the cutouts here, uh, you can see initially it was just cutting out the shape of the model, but afterwards I went back and I cut out not just the shape but also the back plane of the model in order to make sure it was all flat. Contour cuts always need some finishing work after the fact due to the wood strands that try holding on to the underlying wood structure. Even though these can be pushed off just using a fingernail, I've tried a variety of methods from X-Acto knife to sanding sponge. One thing that I didn't have on hand which I think would work best is a bristle brush or a flat wheel that are very light so that they can get into all of the nooks and crannies of a small relief cut such as this one and make your job a lot easier in terms of cleanup. You can see that the detail that comes off the machine is quite nice. You know, those abs are, you know, only a couple millimeters in size. Here I'm showing the size of a business card for scale. To protect the wood and also bring out the grain in the wood, I just grabbed some mineral oil. The finished result is uh, a carve that really pops and it has a lot of detail and you know you never guess that it came off of a hobby CNC machine that was mounted vertically. So I'm just going to take the end of this video to po point out this blog post that we posted on our website when I put up the original video and this just makes some great points that talk about even though you get the pro of a vertical setup in that it can reduce the amount of space a CNC will take up in your shop, this kind of goes over some of the cons that you might want to take into account when you're running a setup such as this. At the end of the day, the long mill is a nice toy and a nice tool that we offer at a very reasonable price. And so I think if you want to experiment and set your machine up vertically, then I'd say go for it. I hope you had some fun with me throughout this video and learned some stuff along the way, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys.